It's the time for mm, Pick It From China. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. Because in this video, we are going to take a close look at the Retro Classic, also known as the Street Mini. And no, this is not a DigiVu or a YouTube glitch or a YouTube glitch matrix, you know. No, this is basically like a new product only in the same package. So have a good time together like the packaging says, but is it actually going to be in good time? So this mini home console is very tiny, but the question remains how good is it? Because the newer version, yeah, is it any good? Did they make an update with the software or is it still the same thing? So basically this thing falls under the Pandora's box lineup. You know, like the main boards and the big sticks, but this is like a tiny version. They basically slapped into a tiny box. But let's do a quick unboxing together. I'm curious like how this thing will look. I understand this was on the white colored version. And let's see, this thing has the 4260. And this is like the newer collection. It's a tiny collection compared with the competition, but it doesn't matter. Like, I'm curious like how this freaking box will look. Ah, he has the white version in the, like the new version. I really love this white glossy color, to be honest. Like I, the reason why I like the glossy piano look, I really hate those because they're going to be like completely scratched up. They still didn't implement extra rubbery feet. I do have like laying around, but this thing will move around. So here you can see they have like the input for the power supply, 12 volt, HDMI out, VJ out, audio out, volume control, like a Pandora's box where you can basically change out the volume, kind of weird still, and have like the tiny button for settings. But we do have an on and off switch over here at the front, but I do like. And of course, the toilet paper manual. Ooh. Uh, let's look at this. So there is not a lot of information in English, or there is. Yeah, there is. Hmm, this is really like a tiny cute little toilet paper metal, I can say that. But when it comes to the specifications, hmm, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be happy with this. So here you can see like this thing has the quad-core Gore-Tec A7 with the Mali 400 MP2 600 megahertz, DDR3 2 gigabytes, and a micro SD with 16 gigabytes. Something like, or sorry, micro SD, most of the time something built in. Doesn't matter. The thing is, like, it is not the most epic specification list ever. So the question remains, how good will this thing perform? We have like two controllers in here. Then we do have like the power supply. It's a very nice looking quality one. It comes with two dongles. So this is more like the configuration that every controller will have a separate dongle. Sometimes we do have like we have two controllers, one dongle, and we're going to get like a very thick, long HDMI cable. Holy crap. Let's take a close look at the controllers. And of course, let's smell it. Oof, man, it smells like burnt plastic. But I must say that the overall quality is not the worst I have seen. The, oh man, that click is so like cheap. But the ABXY button feels very nice. The reason I was doing it like this, because when you're playing some certain games, especially when the buttons are a little bit too high and they have like too long travel, you can just not really do this or it's going to be hurting your thumb. That's basically like my wicked test to do that. The D-pad itself feels very nice, similar like the PlayStation, of course. And I mean like the way how they made it. But and overall, it feels quite nice. So we're going to try some games with it. I'm curious. It's not the best, but also not the worst one. So it's going to be okay. So let's put in the two DUP AAA batteries and let's go with the show. The system has been powered on. Let's take a close look at the dongle because it's going to be in Gamel. Which one will be the right one? My feeling says this one. Let's plug it in. Do get the port on the right and at the left. Kind of cool configuration. All right, so let's turn it on. Okay. Yeah, it's the right one. All right, let's go. Okay, right, I must say that I am surprised they did indeed update the software, but it's more like in the naughty way. So what I understand of this thing is not official from the Pandora's Box DX store. And yeah, guess what the logo is? Pandora's Box DX. The nightmare never ends. The Pandora's Box DX. Yeah, kind of interesting to see that they're basically like using a completely different layout now. But the font is a little bit different. So this thing is absolutely not from the official Pandora's Box store. All right, so when it comes to the game list, really showing you like the amount of it. So here we can see like the old school games like the PlayStation 1. We also implemented some Super NES, Mega Drive or Genesis known by many people. But that's basically what we're going to get. But don't you love it when they just mess up the title like this? <laughs> it gives me that game family feeling again. For the people who didn't see it, like yeah, there was this board that was absolutely garbage. In my opinion. 
So pressing start the controller, we do get like the games option over here. We do have a recent and we do have a search option. So I'm curious about one thing. Does this bloody thing has Mortal Kombat? It does have Mortal Kombat. Okay, that is interesting. So let's see which one it is. Hello? Put it up. Okay, so it is actually like the arcade version. Pressing select will bring you back to the quick load, quick save menu. And do have like an option with this. Okay, pretty cool. Pressing start will give you like a credit. So they basically combine that button. All right, so it seems to be working fine. Because in the previous version, they completely messed it up. Because these things were like completely underpowered. Let's see how the bottom mapping is. I can tell you, it's absolutely horrible, absolutely garbage. One button isn't even mapped. D-pad works very well. All right, so next up, let's try Mortal Kombat 2. I know a lot of people were asking about this in the previous videos, so I just wanted to check it out because most of the time Mortal Kombat 1 runs okay or very well, but they have a problem with 2. Okay, wow, some shitload of screen tearing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Cheesy freaking computer. But then's the question, what are we going to get with the... Yes, with the settings. Because there we have like some weird things go on sometimes. For example, like new Geo console on and off. Seriously, I have no idea what it is. Like doesn't say anything in this crappy toilet paper manual. And like I tried it with new Geo games, no idea, nothing changes. So USB key, gamepad mapping, so you can change out the controls, but it's most of the time like a general setting, so you cannot like ch change out for any particular console. Like I had like with MAME, with Mortal Kombat 2, that the, the controls were messed up. But there is nothing much yet, like game list, you can basically mess around with that, but that's it, you know, there is nothing much you can do. Here says basically like you can toggle the games if you want to. But quite disappointing, there is nothing much you can change in here. Like there's not even game settings that we had like the previous ones. So, nah, it's absolutely garbage. Not even like we can turn off this freaking filter over it. That is pretty damn crap, man. Another thing, you cannot change out the express ratio. You can do it with a television like I'm using here, but that's it. So, next test, Neo Geo with some Art of Fighting 3. I got just slapped in the face with the stick. Curious how the PlayStation 1 will run. Do we have any issues or does it actually run PlayStation 1 good? Round one. Wow, screen tearing, a shitload of them. And it did hear a minor hiccup. But the overall speed is pretty damn good. Okay, so when it comes to emulation performance, it's not bad at all, but do have like the same issues that we've seen before with our pretty previous latest set, like better set, like the first generation of Pandora's boxes. And yeah, I am in the wrong freaking screwdriver. Let's see if we can find the right one over here. The question remains like, what are we going to find in the inside? Because that is quite interesting in my opinion. So this is an interesting tiny box because it is indeed like a newer version. 
I have seen my share of, let's say, these street minis and the, you know, say, how are they like the other ones? I think they're like not super bad, but they had some shortcomings here and there, but they did improve it with the new version. But I don't understand it like, why the guys like Pandori have the option to change an express ratio and add a lot of stuff to it. And the Chinese don't do that. I think they don't really give a shit about it. Okay, so let's see if we can just pop it open. Yeah, we can just pop it open. Uh, one thing I need to do is, the only thing is like, ah, there is the SD card. Uh, let's see, it's a 16 gig. Wow, seriously? It is 16 gigabyte, so that's not a lot. Um, I think I need to pull it out like this. You can basically use it from this side. Let's use the USB drive or USB. We're just going to push it there. And then we're going to remove this over here. So they're using the old school, the old school fan on here. Like I really love that they're not using only a passive fan to fold. They have I have started the option for a speaker, so that's interesting. Can you build this thing inside an arcade? I think it's going to be difficult because the question remains like which encoder will this be using? Because with these Chinese controls, you never know what you're going to get. And there's also no ADA interface, so you cannot like implement a normal cable. So it says like a version two. But there is no production date whatsoever. So let's go funky and let's see what we're going to find underneath the... Okay, so that's kind of horrible. So you can see like there only one of them was attached to it. That is some shitty quality control. We can say that. So it's good I opened it up. Otherwise, it's highly possible this fan was getting loose. All right. So, oh man. They're using the all-winner AC strip. Oh man, the HDU3 chip is absolutely crappy. Uh, let's see if I can basically show you. Oh, there he is. The all-winner A3, this old school quad core, they use it in the first generation. I am surprised how good like some things run, so they optimize it. It only comes with one chip, I cannot really say it. They say it's two gigabytes, one of two gigabytes, doesn't even matter, you know, like do only having this old school chip. So I'm quite disappointed because this is what we're going to get in the first generation of Pandora's boxes, including those like fake ones, like the Pandora's box 5S, 6S. So this is what you're going to get in the inside. But this is what we're going to get with this new street mini Pandora thing. I must say that I'm always fascinated to see how they develop, how they change it out, or sometimes even prove it. I was surprised that they get like MK1 and 2 running on this, but in overall the quality is not super bad. I really like that it's just like a console with an on and off switch because that's not typical with these things. We go got okay controllers, like the D-pad can be better, but it is playable. It smells chemical and I don't like that. Beside that, I really love the mini form factor of these devices. Let me know in the comments what do you think of this. But I thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell and let me know what do you think of this. And it will be great to see you in the next video.